to the firm. Yeah. Really didn't want to practice. Uh, profoundly mediocre law career in law school and uh, didn't really like the conventional mm -hmm. practice. Came out and uh, again, did an arbitration that won me a piece of a bar. Opened multiple restaurants and bars off the back of that one. Somewhere around 2008, nine-ish, <clears throat> we really saw a need for uh, entrepreneurial-based law firms. So what I mean by that is there were a lot of business lawyers who had never owned a business, which was always really- You're looking at one of them. I mean, shit, you start your own <laughs> firm and you run your business. People don't realize that. You're, no, they you're don't. a startup company. Hey, you're a right? startup yeah. company. You're, you're the truest definition of a yeah. startup company. And if your cogs and your prime costs aren't in line and, and you're not considering occupancy costs and all the other things that we would sit as a business person and consider, you're, you're really running yourself into, into a wall at a, mm. at a high, high velocity. That was always very interesting to me that the business lawyers had never been businessmen. So saw a space there and uh, capitalized on it. And then over the past decade have expanded on that, which now interestingly has morphed into a, a much broader practice, still catering to startups and entrepreneurial-based law, but intellectual property over the past nice. couple years has become a huge, huge topic uh, as we see a transfer of brick and mortar was traditionally the, the unit of, of wealth. Right. Yeah. And now we're sitting and we're all talking about digital wealth. There's your digital space wealth. All Crazy. digital space, right? Mm -hmm.